This is NFA Talk, the show that talks about guns and gun rights. Keeping you up to date with what's currently going on. From the newest guns, promotions, and events, plus how we're lobbying for your rights. Hi, everybody. Sheldon Clare here with Jordan, Charles, and Matt Wasilevich. Uh, Matt will be our special guest this evening. He's here to tell us about his experiences with Airsoft. Matt's also a paintballer and a former Ipsic shooter. So uh, we've got kindred spirits all around. I think pretty much everybody here has done a little bit of most of that. I think the only one I haven't done is Airsoft. But so Matt, you want to tell us about Airsoft and what Bill C-21 is going to mean to the Airsoft community? Sure. Um, usually when I try to describe airsoft to people, if they're not familiar with it already, uh, the easiest way is to just compare it to paintball. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as paintball is. It's a shooting game, a shooting sport, uh, just done with different equipment. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you probably won't find a paintball field in the country anymore that doesn't also offer airsoft games at their field too. Um, so that's probably the easiest way to describe it. Uh, Bill C-21 kind of caught us off guard there a little bit last week because essentially what that bill spells out would be the end of our industry, just to put it bluntly, if it were to pass as it's written. Well, uh, absolutely. And I mean, we, we've already seen changes in, in culture that have been engineered for a, a good long time. Uh, kids don't play cops and robbers anymore or walk around with cap guns. I can't remember the last time I've seen any of that bang bang stuff go on. And this has all gotten more and more silly. And here we are with one of the silliest things ever. Although there has been a fair bit of effort to try and stop the use of look-alike type firearms by the authorities for many years. They, they tried this back with uh, a Bill C-51 in 1978. They were, that's where the first attempts to hammer replicas started to come up. So it's not as new as you might think, but it's certainly about changing a culture and changing the structure. So have you had a look at the bill, Matt? And oh, absolutely. I've read through it. At, and I understand there's a petition out now that people can sign who are concerned about the issue. And also it, it, it says to stop it completely because it's of the economic damage it's going to do. The yeah, business. exactly. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about... Uh, the politics that's going on in the airsoft community nowadays what's what's happening in airsoft that's got everybody so mad about this what are they doing about it are there pushes to build a larger organization are you getting help from others yeah so like i said this kind of caught us off a little uh caught us off guard quite a bit uh the airsoft industry has been growing quite substantially over the past decade uh to the point where it's it's really starting to break out into the mainstream uh, pe you know, regular people are starting to know what airsoft is, whereas 10 years ago, if you were to mention that to most regular people, most people would not have a clue what you were talking about. But now it's starting to get out there and be as common as paintball is and actually in a lot of areas becoming even more popular than paintball for a few different reasons. Um, obviously, this has our industry up in disarray right now because no one's really sure what to expect or, or what's going to come of this. But uh, obviously we're doing everything we can right now. Uh, just mostly at this point, trying to get the word out to everyone. So everyone is first of all, aware of the, the threat that this bill causes to our industry and to encourage everyone to speak out as much as possible. So all of our MPs are aware of, um, you know, how much we disagree with this and uh, you know, that we want to make sure we can, you know, get this stopped. Absolutely. How many people participate in airsoft across Canada? Do you, do you know about that or North America, Europe? And if I were to estimate in Canada, I would peg it probably somewhere around the 400,000 mark. Nice. Uh, it would be higher if you started considering, you know, all of the people who have been out for a birthday party or a bachelor party or just with a group of friends or a work group. I mean, then the, the numbers really start going up. Like, uh, for instance, I don't know if you could find a young kid in our region here who hasn't played paintball on my field before. It's kind of one of those things that a lot of people usually at least do once in their lifetime. And uh, well, Airsoft is starting to become like that as well. Well, there see, even, 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 
<laughs> yeah, even some of us old kids play paint, uh, played paintball. I, I started playing those games back in the 80s, well after I was into firearms. So I can't claim that this is a gateway thing for me. I, 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 I mean, I was, I, I, was, I was very much into firearms and shooting well before our paintball came along. And, I, and like you say, I found it fun to go out in the paintball field and just have a really good physical workout running and jumping and hiding and, and uh, well, in one case, almost breaking my leg and <laughs> just generally having a, a grand old time with friends, particularly people for ceremonies like uh, stags. You know, people, someone's getting married. You took oh, somebody absolutely. out there. You, you painted up his clothes. And, uh, and now it's now it's uh, airsoft, which is a, a, a bit more of a different game. It's a bit more tactical than paintball was. Well, paintball certainly had its tactics. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, even at my field that I have, um, we've seen a, a really big uptick in uh, birthday parties for Airsoft now that, uh, you know, moms are calling in the birthday parties, but they're specifically asking for Airsoft nowadays instead of paintball, which is interesting. Whereas five years ago, that would have never happened. And now it's, that's almost starting to become the norm nowadays. Well, and part of the attraction is the realism of the uh, of the of the tools, right? Like you yeah, the the equipment's cool. Uh, the guns are more accurate than you know the old paintball guns were. Uh, another big thing too that a lot of people maybe don't quite think about right away is that uh, it's a lot cleaner than paintball is. Your gear doesn't get as kind of destroyed over the years. And for a lot of people, it's uh, more economical to play because the cost of BBs is significantly less than the cost of paintballs. So it allows more players to play more often than, uh, than let's say, paintball would, which is another attracting factor to uh, Airsoft. Jordan, so, you had so, so Matt, is, is there, is there a, a minimum age required? Like, do, is there any kind of regulation on, on age with, with these kinds of sports? Well, not for participation, but for purchasing the gear, um, almost everything that's applicable to, you know, real firearms is actually also applicable to airsoft as well. Uh, and BB guns or pellet guns for that matter, with the exception that you don't have to have uh, a license to own them, but you still do have to be 18 to purchase. You have to use common sense when transporting them, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. Right. If you're using it in a threatening manner, it's, treated as if you were in possession of a firearm that's what the law is now absolutely yeah so well, so you, you, when 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 the, when the when the kids show up to your field they're they're what age group would they be like your regulars would they be uh the the 10 to 18 the 18 to 20 30 years old or well that, that's age? one of the that's one of the really great things about a sport like airsoft is that it allows players from all ages in all different you know, varying degrees of physical fitness to participate on an equal playing field. Uh, it's one of the few sports out there where you could have a kid at 12 years old be just as competitive playing off the field, if not better than, you know, an adult at, you know, let's say 30 or 40. Because um, as long as you're good at shooting and running around, you can, you can compete with someone who is older than you and maybe more physically fit than you, uh, which is pretty cool. And I would say our average range for players really will vary anywhere from 12 years old to, you know, 35 to 40 years old. We have a lot of father and sons that come and play together. It's very popular for that. Uh, you know, both father and son can, you know, play equally competitive on the field against or with each other. So are women getting involved in this sport as well? Um, not as many women as men, but uh, there's definitely been an increase of women getting involved in, uh, in airsoft and paint all over the years. Absolutely. Okay. So Matt, I just want to ask you as well too, um, like this isn't a uh, a universal ban on all airsoft fire firearms, if you want to put it that way, or you know um, rifles or pistols, right? So you know there's uh, there's there's others that are going to be unaffected by this, you know, and, and this is not a total surprise. Like you know, uh, Sheldon was already talking about the replicas, you know, and we, and we've seen the airsoft rifles that become, you know, they they, they look exactly like uh, you know the you know, the things that are actually real out there. And I think that's what's alarming a lot of these progressive civil disarmamentalists, right? So um, do you know do you know exactly what, I guess, how they're going to make this distinction, you know, of what airsoft rifles are to be prohibited and others are not? Have you looked into that? 
Well, the way it's written, and after talking with some contacts of mine in the CBSA, we've kind of come to the determination that I would say 99.9% .9 of airsoft guns would be affected by this. Uh, including basically every BB gun or pellet gun that you'd find in like a Canadian Tire or a Walmart. Um, because the way the bill is written is that it doesn't have to resemble exactly a real firearm. It could be with near precision a real firearm. And that's left to a lot of determination, which uh, can be very problematic when it comes to trying to apply law or especially for CBSA to try to determine what products are admissible into Canada or not. And the problem that happens, uh, you know, especially, you know, I've heard some people say, well, why can't you make an airsoft gun look like a space gun or something like that, for example? Um, not that the industry should be forced to redesign everything just to, you know, make our way around to fit into a new law. But the problem that people don't think about is what would happen if, uh, let's say I asked you to design a car but it, it, it's not allowed to look like a car in order for it. Exa to exactly. You see, the, the thing is, is that form follows function. So anything, you know, let's say, for example, that you want to shoot a BB, um, it doesn't matter what you really come up with. Everything is going to more or less look the same. <clears throat> so in those regards, pretty much anything is going to end up looking like a real gun. There's not really much of a way around that with something like a BB gun or a pellet gun or an but they, gun. But they do have um, those guns that are, you know, they got the little, uh, you know, uh, orange tip on it, or they have, uh, you know, it's got a clear chassis. It looks like a gun, but it looks like a toy, right? So I'm yeah, not sure it, if that's gonna qualify or not. I mean, this is all vague stuff. Exactly, so, and that's that's what we're unsure of as well, is would that qualify? Really, the, in the way the law is, or sorry, not the law, the bill is written, um, it doesn't really, I mean, it's only two lines really that affect our industry and there's not a lot of detail given in there. Um, so as of now, I would have to assume that something like an orange tip or, you know, a clear lower would, it wouldn't really matter unless it was specifically written in there to say, yes, an orange tip would exempt us, you which actually is a common thing that a lot of countries do do is with toy guns or, mm -hmm you know, BB guns, pellet guns, they're, they're sold with irremovable orange tips. Yes. Uh, that's but, not but currently can, in our laws with Canada. So we don't, uh, our guns aren't sold that way. But the, t the thing about orange tips and those little changes in color and so on, that matters nothing because we have firearms that are like that, that ha can be, in, you know, in pink or orange or green or yellow or any other color you care to name. So yeah, that's exactly. probably, probably not going to work. And I mean, when, when you start talking about does it rese closely resemble a firearm, when you look at this paintball uh, a, a marker here, does that closely resemble a firearm? It has, you know, a foregrip, a pistol grip. It's got some thing on the top, you know, this the little thing that flips up. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it's it's a, whole, a whole bunch of silliness. And I, I think you're right to be concerned. Uh, what's, the, what's the sentiment in the airsoft community about firearms owners? So are, are they on side or is there division? About well, honestly, that's that's where it can be quite interesting. Um, obviously, there's going to be a large portion of airsoft enthusiasts who also possibly own real firearms or um, are interested in it. But airsoft is also surprisingly popular in uh, the big cities as well. Um, almost well, every major city in Canada has uh, indoor playing fields in the big cities. So you really do get a very diverse group of people who play airsoft who might not necessarily be uh, firearms owners or pro firearms, but they love airsoft. So uh, it really is a pretty diverse community in those regards, which uh, I'm not sure a lot of people would really think that off, you know, when they first think about it, but uh, it definitely is. I see, I see both, uh, both sides of it in airsoft. You know, uh, Matt, there's one thing that uh, I just want to jump back to what we're talking about about what's in the bill. Uh, one important distinction of what's not in the bill that's affecting you know, law-abiding uh, firearms owners who have had their, their firearms uh, recently prohibited is the whole buyback aspect of this. There's no mention of that for airsoft or paintball uh, markers, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all the bill does, the way it's written, is make our industry illegal, but it, it doesn't offer... Um, doesn't give us anything in return. It says we can 
keep them, whatever that means we can do with them at that point. But, but, can't use but them. also it doesn't, that doesn't uh, do anything to help uh, the literally hundreds of businesses that rely on airsoft in Canada. Like uh, for instance, I, I own a wholesale company, Canadian airsoft imports. And I've been doing that now for the past 10 years. So me and one other uh, gentleman in Toronto, between the two of us, uh, we bring in almost all of the airsoft equipment that you'd see in the country. And uh, for me alone, I supply over 150 uh, airsoft retail stores in the country. Um, that doesn't even start to factor in all the the larger stores who would sell BB guns or pellet guns or, you know, all the gear that goes along with them. So a lot of people would really be affected by this and at least 150 stores would be directly affected that it would basically shut them down. Well, um, we've talked to a few businesses that are affected by this. And I mean, even our, our, our court case on C21 cake with KKS tactical and uh, Cassie Premack uh, is, I think one of your customers as well. Yeah. I talk with them all the time. Yeah, and uh, uh, Sean Allen from the local uh, Prince George Airsoft community where I live was was also very, very direct about what this would mean. And I, I think the sentiment is pretty clear that this is going to be a huge destruction of another aspect of Canadian firearms culture that is really harmless. It's good exercise. And this really has nothing whatsoever to do with stopping gang violence in Toronto or anywhere else. That no, as a matter no of fact, one of the reasons why so many parents love airsoft is it's getting their kids off the couch and off the video <laughs> games and, you know, going to, to play it in real life. It's getting them active. Yeah. It's getting them socializing with other people. Uh, it's getting younger kids socializing with, uh, with adults too, which I think is also an important thing. You know, get the, the age groups in there all socializing together and playing together. Well, sure. And not everybody's gotten into the whole cell phone and, and, doing everything online and this is a great way for people to get outside and get back into those old time boomer activities like old guys like i used to do playing going outside and and, and playing the the whole cops and robbers thing and 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 the, all those outdoor sports because you just don't see that as much anymore and i think airsoft paintball just the basic uh good old-fashioned sports are great and i mean charlie's got his pellet rifle there this kind of stuff is what people cut their teeth on and growing up and learned about pointing, learned about safe handling of firearms in an environment with devices that are really generally not that dangerous. Like mm -hmm. anything, use it safely. So I want to I want to circle back. Um, so they're going to make these prohibited, which means you're probably not going to allow to be allowed to use them again. Uh, which what what does this mean for the end user, Matt? Like how much? Like what's the average? airsoft or paintball gun going for nowadays that you know um because we, we haven't heard anything of a buyback either from from the government on this so i mean you're gonna have a lot of paperweights basically sitting around the house but what are we looking at for like an average cost well the average cost of an airsoft gun can be anywhere from about 200 dollars at retail up to uh you know you can you can get into the thousands uh, on average anywhere between two to six hundred dollars uh, most players will own, you know, multiple different airsoft guns because, you know, like anyone, when you get into a hobby, people like to collect gear and, you know, you just kind of accumulate over the years. Uh, one thing I, I think a lot of people don't realize is just how big the uh, BB gun, pellet gun, airsoft industry is in Canada. And uh, actually, I was spending some time on Statistics Canada yesterday getting some... Uh, some import figures and just BB guns alone. So not counting the BBs or parts or accessories or anything that goes along with that. Uh, the, the gross imports for BB guns alone for Canada last year was $32 million. Wow. You and, know that's what? Just, not and that's just the imports. So once yeah. you, once you extrapolate that down, um, you know, from the wholesalers to the retail, you know, to the retailers, then to the end users, and then you add up all the parts and accessories and everything else that goes along with that. You're talking about the ultimate end of it, an industry that's uh, in the hundreds of millions of dollars at that point. And you know, that's, that's, not, you, that's not even counting about, the, uh, too. About, about who it's affecting. Uh, I was reading the other day too. There was the uh, 
you know, the Boy Scouts came out and said, this is, this is, you know, part of the recreational thing that they do in the summertime with uh, the scouts. Mm -hmm. And they use, they use thousands of air guns to do target practice. And like Sheldon was saying, to learn safe practices, you know, that, you know, lead up to, you know, safe firearms handling as well too. So, you know, once again, this is a, you know, it's a big cut into the Canadian culture again. Right. But the, the real thing that I, I find, um, disturbing about this is the timing of this bill right i mean like you you're you're an importer right so you're probably you, you probably already put your order in you probably got stuff coming your way in a big container or two right with oh boy yeah it's the worst yeah, with thousands period. and thousands of dollars right so now they're on their way you know if the liberals come in and they and they bring this thing in you're going to be on the hook for well i don't know what you're going to be on the hook for but there's going to be millions of dollars you know of inventory that can't be sold that's going to be, I don't know what, like, I mean, what do you do with that? Right. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's not. It's what, not uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just saying that that's what that's as importers and the retailers, that's what we're trying to, to figure out. Like, you know, what do we do right now? This is the spring is around the corner, which is the start of the year for our industry. It's an out, exactly. generally an outdoor sport. Um, so this is kind of a, the worst time when you know, we're we're all trying to purchase and, and stock up and get ready for the spring now and then now you know this hits us and we really we're not really sure what to do well i've already heard of orders being canceled at stores for for these items i've certainly seen people uh getting concerned about real firearms as well in a big way i mean this you know that's the the other uh, the shoe on this this uh thing but this isn't about airsoft or any of this. This is all about destroying what people want to do and how they live and changing a culture and a mentality. That's what this is really about. And I think if anybody doubts that, I think the attack on airsoft, paintball and, and air rifles is, is a clear indication that this is not about stopping uh, thugs and violence in inner cities. This, is, this clearly has no relationship to it. No, you're right, Sheldon. This is about social reengineering. And the Liberals already talked about this. It was a couple of key MPs. I'm not going to mention any names. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but they've actually come out and said that, uh, you know, anything that looks like uh, an assault style toy even, right, um, you know, glorifying war or shooting or criminal violence or whatever it is, right, these are all going to be targeted, right? So, once again, this, this, is, this, not, this has nothing to do with public safety. An air gun or a paint soft or a, you know, a, you know, all those other, uh, you know, things that, you know, people use for recreation. That's got nothing to do with this. This is about big government telling you what you can and cannot do. Now, do and we how you can live. It's, yes. it's, it's the old Sharon Carr stairs. You know, the, the first step in re-engineering our society. Yep. That, that's what this is really about. It's social re-engineering. The snowflakes are, are starting to melt over the fact that there are people who just don't share their views and values. And I, I've heard, I heard Alan Rock say it back in the 90s. This is about the kind of country we want to live in. Well, it is about the kind of country we want to live in. And one in which our activities, our hobbies, our interests are being pilloried and criticized and, 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 and terminated, apparently. It's not, it's not okay. And I think it's, it's good that people are standing up and noticing this and saying no. And I think the petition that the airsofters have put out that's uh, just, been, just been put forward, I signed it myself uh, uh, yesterday. I, I think that this is, this is a great thing to see this going forward and, and making a statement. And I think it's important people sign petitions the official ones, the, the, the official parliamentary ones are the ones that matter. The other things that, that are out there, they, they mean nothing. They're just collecting, collecting mailing lists. But they make a statement, regardless if, if the government ignores that statement or not. It's important to make that statement because when you go to, to, go to argue against this, you can say, hey, I'm not alone on this. You know, yep. that, and, and, and thank you, Jordan's put up the... the uh, Petition. We've got it on our website at nfa.ca. It's certainly getting out there in the airsoft community. I, I've, I've seen it in quite a few places, as well as businesses that support airsoft. Uh, and it, this isn't just about airsoft, everybody listening in. I, I, I got to say, it's really about you and what you like to do and that the government saying that that's not okay. You know what, but for all the people, the, the airsoft people out there, the 
paintball people out there, welcome to the club, unfortunately. Um, and this is not a Canadian phenomenon. This is happening around the world. And Sheldon and I, we've both been at UN, you know, and we see this, uh, you know, that black hand at play there where they want to disarm the world, you know, and the, and the major principles are coming from there. And of course, our, you know, activist, uh, you know, PM is all over that, right? You know, they, you know, he is, you know, he wants to appease the, you know, the globals out there. But, you know, the paintballers and the, uh, you know, the airsoft people now are in the same boat that we're in. So, you know, they need to now get political again. They need to be calling their MPs. I mean, this, you know, this petition was basically started um, by a whole bunch of calls into, you know, the MP um, of Alliston, right, that uh, received a whole bunch of calls and, and he was spurned on by, um, you know, a lot of these calls. So that has great effect. And I can, I can recommend one more thing. You know, the paintballers need to get organized. I, I did some research on, uh, you know, paintballers and airsoft people out there. And it's basically, uh, you know, a network of clubs that are not really affiliated or connected, right? You guys need to get mobilized and organized nationally and uh, start start creating a, you know, a, a big force here, just like the way we have. So, you know, that that's, that's the way you counter this. Well, there's a couple of ways too, right? I mean, we're happy to help out any way we can. And our insurance actually would support Airsoft and Bankball as well. We have those kinds of features that are, that are good. It's not business insurance, but it helps any individuals that are engaged in the activities. And why should you have to organize, a, 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 like make an association and have no, all a bunch of new rules? Fields are well governed. Businesses look after their own interests. If they didn't, they wouldn't be in business. And I, I, I just hate the fact that we're once again in a situation where a segment of our community is under attack and all well, our whole community is under attack, frankly. And here we are being, being told to slice more off the loaf, make more compromises, and then, you know, maybe things will be okay. And, and I, I, I just, it's not how it is. The loaf of bread gets shorter and shorter and shorter as we are forced to make more and more compromises. Right. And, and it just chop, 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 chop. And pretty soon you've got a couple of crumbs left and then nothing. True. So, so Jordan, you, you used to do some of this stuff yourself. You, you, you played a few of these. Uh, yeah. Back in, back in the, back in the day, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I was always at Matt's field there at DMZ uh, playing. I, I had a great time with it. Um, you know, it, it uh, back then, even back then, it was like you were part of a little community. Everybody showed up on on Tuesday night or on the weekend, and you got together, and it was always a great time. Um, even even back then, there was always birthday <coughs> parties going on. There was younger younger kids running around, and and smiles smiles on their face. And I, I just I don't see why the government's even even going this route. I mean, we we all we all know why they don't want guns, and and they called this a gateway. I mean. I, I I don't I don't think it was a gateway for me. I, I was starting to shoot real guns at that time, so it, it's still it, it, I, the government has no reason to be to be attacking this community either, right? No, and it's the same level of fun and socialization that gun owners enjoy that happens in people. We go out to the range, you meet the meet the the, 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 the folks out there, all the all your friends, you talk about firearms you don't talk about work you don't talk about troubles you're experiencing all of that stuff melts away and you focus on what you're doing i that's that's how my experience of a shooting range is or hunting or any of the shooting sports activities and it's the same thing that i've experienced on paintball fields i haven't tried airsoft but gosh i'm thinking of taking it up after this Sure. <laughs> yep. maybe, maybe we'll form our we'll form our own team eh? the uh yeah, yeah. The nfa uh airsoft team <laughs> yeah well i'm gonna I, I gotta drop a few pounds before i can get back into fighting trim but i'm gonna work on that now there we go you know Absolutely. in that c21 another thing that we should talk about that we now share in common yeah. um is you know i think i forget what the blurb is in there but any kind of advertisement that uh, depicts you know violence with firearms right so well, airsoft and paintball is now, you know, classified, you know, as a firearm, not in a legal sense, but, you know, basically, uh, uh, in, in, you know, encompassed in that whole definition. And now your advertisement, and I've seen your website and other websites that advertise, you know, airsoft and paintball, and you've got, you know, guys all tacked up and you, you see people doing things. I mean, 
Is that the same kind of problem? Is that advertising going to be a threat to the sport? Well, that's going to be, right? I mean, you know, if you have sensitivities (laughs) to this and you even see a gun, of course, you're going to be, you know, um, you know, uh, affected, you know, um, you know, but I mean, where is that distinction of, you know, where, you know, where do you draw the line on that? You know, it's so vague again. This whole thing is so undefined. There's no way that anybody can comply. There's just no way. Well, it's about the end of it. So, Matt, uh, you, you, used, you used to shoot IPSC, uh, International Practical Shooting Confederation. And, you know, you, you've you got, gotten away with that. Family gets, you know, business. Everything gets in the way. Do you see a relationship between those activities? The Airsoft, IPSC, Tactical Games? Oh, there's definitely some crossover with the people who participate in them, for sure. Mm-hmm. And how... how you, do you, so there's a fair bit of sympathy uh, in all of these communities for these activities. And I mean, I, th- I, I could hear the next crack when everybody found out that this was in Bill C-21. And then when everyone went, huh? Pellet guns? Mm-hmm. Airsoft guns? What? Yeah, crack? It, sounds, it sounds a little ridiculous. It, it's beyond ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous for them to go after the firearms they're going after as well. That's that's completely ridiculous. And, and, and it's no doubt and no reason... To, to be surprised that people are angry about this. They are angry and they have every right to be and they need to contact their members of parliament. They need to get involved with their local clubs and communities regardless of the sport or activity they're involved in. Uh, but one of the groups that I think is really getting short shrift generally in C21 are collectors. People who, who buy firearms to examine them, learn about them, uh, perhaps have a theme associated with their collection. You know, they start they start doing this no firearms in cities stuff, or you know, or you can store them at your club. Well, if you're a collector, you don't have to have a club, right? You're you're you can just have them. And this this I think is going to be <coughs> an issue as well. This is an attack on people's mobility rights. It's an attack on everything we like to do and, and the way we like to do it. It's- you know, there's a I was uh, listening to some other stuff coming out of Quebec and. Um, there's an airsoft group there, and you probably heard about this, Matt, that, you know, they want to negotiate with the government in terms of what's happening with the airsoft and uh, paintball. And I, I chuckled to myself because we've been we've been negotiating for two decades, right? We've been negotiating for five decades. Yeah, five decades, right? They don't negotiate. There's no negotiating, right? They, 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 will, they will take the information that you give them through their fake consultation and work it against you. So... Um, I, I just kind of forewarn people out there. We've been doing this for a long time. You know, we're all bunnies at this now, so we know their tricks of the trade. And they will not negotiate. They will no. manipulate, and there'll be uh, sh- you know chicanery and subterfuge, and they'll use that information against you. So the best way to do this, we need to defeat these liberals sooner than later. You know, so that you know this this whole thing um, is swept away by a reasonable government that will actually regulate in a reasonable way. I mean, gun banning anything is not a regulation. That's just lazy, lazy legislation that that's got nothing to do with anything. So absolutely. It's it's the old philosophy that a slice off a cut loaf is seldom missed. You you know, once, once you got the loaf sliced and then they just keep cutting more pieces off that loaf, you know, then, then it's nothing left. So, I, I think we I think we've got a great challenge that is facing all of us, whether we're uh, in the the air air rifle, airsoft, paintball communities, or whether we're we're owners of firearms that we have because we collect them. We're people who use firearms for protection, self defense, or at our our jobs, or if we're using firearms in sport shooting activities or for hunting. This affects all of us. Every single one of us, and no one who owns anything like that it is covered in this bill should be supporting any aspect of the bill or in any way compromise. No compromise. That's really what we we have to the, give the message back to them, because that's what they throw out first. Is they say, well, there's some things that you can agree with, and and they try to work this compromise. And it's it's again, it's it's let's slice the loaf, because we don't get anything back, right? It's, it, you see, a real compromise is both parties give up something and they come to something that that they want. Well, it isn't about us compromising or reaching a deal. It's about them making us compromise ourselves and losing. And then we just keep losing and keep losing and keep losing. And that's that's what I see happening with with 
with the uh, the air community as well as uh, as well as firearms. You know, you. Uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, rumblings going on in the states about this. Maybe Matt, you can you can talk to this um, even more so than you know the gun ban issue up here. Uh, you know, I guess they're kind of you know jaded and they expect that kind of thing to happen to Trudeau up here. But this whole paint soft, uh, you know, airsoft ban that's going on up here. There's a lot of people that in the uh, the states that are now chiming in and saying, you know, you know, th this is def definitely going to affect, affect things down there. I know, you know, there's there's cross border competitions that go on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe you can talk to that a little bit, Matt. Oh yeah, well, the community it's all connected, right? What affects one affects the others. So, and it puts a sour taste in anyone's mouth to hear something, you know, happen in another country in a community that you all you know, share and enjoy, you know, a, sport, a common sport together. Uh, we do a lot of, a lot of trade goes back and forth in our industry between the United States and Canada. So a lot of that, well, pretty much all of it would end for our industry. Uh, there's some manufacturers of products in the U S that do sell uh, their products here to, you know, Canadian stores or Canadian distributors. Uh, they obviously wouldn't have that anymore either. So it definitely affects uh, our neighbors down South as well. If this were to go through. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we've got a better understanding of uh, the challenges we're facing. Uh, and uh, Matt uh, Wasilevich, uh, thank you very much for joining us on NFA Talk. And for, thanks to everyone out there for listening in. I think we've really covered a fair bit of ground here. And I, I hope that people will get out there and sign that petition. It's on our website at nfa.ca. I'm sure you have it at your business and at, at, your, at, your, at your airsoft field. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Our industry has been sending it out to everyone. So, yeah. Perfect. And if you want to want to put a plug in for your field there, Matt, and tell tell us where you're located. So well, I'm, you I'm located down here in Niagara region. So my field I own is DMZ Paintball, and uh, we do paintball and airsoft out there. So nice, fantastic. We'll get out yeah, there. Right. And the and the the website for that's uh, dm dmz dot uh, com or is it dmzcanada.com dmzcanada.com so guys guys check it out uh, if you have, if you're in the area or you're you're not too far away in the Niagara region uh it, it's definitely i mean i i used to go there when i was when i was younger it's it's a nice atmosphere it's a nice place uh professionally done you can um you can get all your equipment there uh matt you, you still have a store downtown yeah, yeah, we still have the store there as well. So, I mean, if you're looking to get into the sport, uh, definitely check out the store. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something to definitely to check into. I, I might have to I might have to get back into the uh, into the sport. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, if we get all our guns taken away for us. We're gonna have to find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, something else. And to I do. can assure you, that's not gonna happen because nobody's giving <laughs> up anything. And you know, stick to your guns, everybody don't give up anything fight this hard and and don't be bullied don't let the bully pulpit of the liberals in their parliament tell us how we can live our lives we know how to live our lives we're good people thanks very much all right guys thanks for tuning in and we'll we'll see you again shortly Thanks for listening to this episode of NFA Talk. Like and follow the NFA on social media and sign up to become a member. 